This is your spiritual game plan, and I'm your host, Sherry Fletcher. Change. It happens to all of us. You've invested your time and energy into an important role, sometimes for years. Then suddenly it's time for you to move on. Maybe you've worked hard on a dream, and now your path is taking a new turn, but the dream isn't going with you. Perhaps you've raised your kids, and now they've moved on, but your empty nest is filled with parent care. Maybe you're in the middle of diaper changes and laundry piles. If you find yourself asking questions like, where do I fit in anymore? Am I even relevant? How do I find my purpose now? You are in the right place. This is the show for women in a season of transition. I believe that while your roles in life will change, your purpose is eternal. I'm here to help you understand just how intentionally you were made by a creator with a game plan. Through interviews and inspirational guests, we'll discover ways to help you unlock the purpose God placed in you, develop a game plan for your life's calling, and embrace the intentional masterpiece you were created to be. Today's going to be a little bit different. My friend and coach, Sherry Gregory, is going to be interviewing me. She has been so instrumental in helping me with the pivot I took in writing and speaking. We're going to talk about our friendship history that started over 30 years ago with a chance encounter that was clearly God's plan and how I got to where I am today with this podcast. I'm so thankful that you have chosen to listen to your spiritual game plan. I would love to connect with you. All the information you need to reach me will be in the show notes. I hope you enjoy this time together with my coach, Sherry, and I, as we invite you into what is known by our peers as the Sheratory. I am so excited that I get to introduce you to my friend and my coach, Sherry Gregory. Like I mentioned in the intro, um, I met Sherry thir over 30 years ago when I uh, briefly attended the same school she was at and commonly got mistaken as that other Sherry. <laughs> and then God brought us together 30 years later when I found um, something she had written on Facebook and I just connected with her and God just opened the doors from there and here we are today. So thank you Sherry for joining me and helping me um, share the history of this podcast. Oh, well, I am excited to be here and to be part of the Sheratory. Yes. Um, you know, it's always great that the two of us spell our names. The we won't say way. this out loud, but you know, the right way. Um, <laughs> and so I'm going to kind of commandeer. I'm not just your guest. I'm not really your guest today. I'm going to be the, uh, your guest host. So I'm going to kind of take over and do the question asking here, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, so I want to kind of go back in time here um, and ask you, is having a podcast something that, you know, when we met briefly 30 some years ago, is that something that you could have seen in your future? Was that like the kind of thing? I mean, I realized podcasting wasn't even a thing back then, but was that this the kind of thing that you could have seen yourself doing way back then? Um, yes. Even though I, I was unaware of of the actual purpose that God was bringing out in me at the time. As I look back um, over what I did, even as a baby, I would probably have a microphone in my hand. Um, I never met a microphone I was scared of or a stage I was scared of. And um, I was very social, I'm an Enneagram seven. And so um, I just loved socializing, talking to people. And if someone needed an announcement made, impromptu, I, I had no problem doing that. All righty. So um, let's talk a bit about the title that you've chosen for your podcast. What there's, there's a fair amount of history. In fact, if, if I'm doing my math right, there's almost a decade and a half of history mm -hmm. behind the title there. So uh, share a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, this Oh yeah, almost 15 years mm -hmm. ago, I was watching my husband coach my daughter's uh, middle school basketball team. And I watched how those little girls just devoured the game plan book. They would look at their game plans. They would practice their, their plays. They knew the calls. They did not want to get out on that court and be the one that, you know, lost the ball or cost the point. 
Okay, I'm gonna interrupt you yeah. because I am so non-athletic. I don't <laughs> okay. actually know what a game plan book is. So for those of your listeners who might be like me, athletically like challenged, what is in a game plan yes. book? Thank you. They would get a book that would um, have the name of the play and they mm-hmm. gave them different names so that, it, you know, the, each team has a different name for their plays. Mm-hmm. And in that, the name under that would be their position and what they were to do to execute that play. And so depending on your position, you might or might not have the ball. You might be making sure the ball gets to the person that's running to the hoop. Um, you might be blocking the other team. So they would look at that game book and they would make sure that they knew where they were and then they would go out and practice that play so that when the coach or the team captain called out the name of that play, they knew exactly where to be on the court. Okay, so it sounds like every member would need to memorize all of these plays. And so that it's kind of a shorthand when they're in the midst that that particular strategy when that play gets called, whatever it was was on the page comes to mind and they know exactly what to do in that situation. So they don't have to figure it out. They don't have to make it up. They're not doing their own thing. They're they're doing something that's been decided on ahead of time. Yes. Okay. All right. right. Thank you so much for the remedial (laughs) lesson there. Okay. So back to the name of your podcast and back to that moment 15 years ago when you were watching your daughter's team. Yes. So our kids were attending a Christian private school. And um, as I was watching those, those girls study their play and my daughter would come home and practice on the hoop out in the garage or out in the driveway. And I thought, you know, even though uh, at the time or still currently my kids go to a Christian school and go to church, we were not giving them spiritual game plans. We weren't setting up things that could come down the road their way. We taught them and we should teach them biblical studies and lessons and um, introduce them to relationship with Christ. But were we sitting down and saying, what are you going to do with peer pressure? What are you going to do when these things happen? What's your play? So that when those um, temptations or whatever was going to come their way, they could go, oh, I remember what I'm supposed to do here. And so um, I developed a program where the um, Well, I'll back up on that one. I knew if I started the program myself and went to the middle school and said, okay, here's what's coming up in high school, it would be a lecture. And my kids would want to hide under their desk that mom was in the classroom doing that. So I recruited some high school kids and I worked with them and still continue to this day to work with them. Um, And then they go down to the middle school and share testimonies of their time in high school, what they wish they had had a game plan for, game plan for, and how they can execute their game plans now. So the podcast, Your Spiritual Game Plan, as it relates to my ministry of understanding and unlocking the purpose you have in you, is executing a spiritual game plan to use that purpose, to hear God's voice, um, to understand that God himself has had a plan for you, and to make sure that you are on the same page um, with the Lord so that your purpose can be fully utilized. Okay. So this is really helpful for me. What I'm hearing is that um, instead of just having random skills or floating bits of information, like I know this won't shock you, but I was the gold star girl um, back when I was little and I memorized all my Bible verses. Like I can still quote a lot of it to you in King James, but if I'm understanding you correctly, just, and I don't mean to in any way dismiss the memorization of scripture. Yeah. So just having memorized words um, isn't the same as having a game plan. Can, can you, like, like, there's part of me that understands that, but can you spell out for us what the difference is now from a spiritual standpoint, from um, being a you know good Bible study girl who sits down every day and 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 you know spends time in God's Word, which is a good thing to do, memorizes God's Word, um, and actually having a spiritual game plan. What 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 do you say is, sees the difference there? Okay, I'll I'll go I'll go sports on you here. Please do. <laughs> it's how you execute. 
So those memorization, just like memorizing the names of the plays, they help you understand then how you can execute your defense <laughs> metaphor. And so, you know, it's so important. Um, I like to say practice makes purpose, not perfect. Practice makes purpose. And just like those girls had to practice and practice and practice so that when the time came, they could automatically know what to do. And as women, um, I think the same thing. We, we read and we study and we know scripture, but when, when we don't practice the gifts and have a game plan on how we're going to um, face what's coming up ahead, and how we can use our gifts in those places and in those seasons and in those transitions, uh, all, of the, all of the memorization isn't put to practice, isn't put to use, and then we don't see ourselves as relevant or necessary. Okay, so I'm looking at your, your podcast promise. You say, this is the show for women in a season of transition. And I'm realizing um, when you, as you're talking about this whole execution thing, um, and that practice makes purpose. Uh, so what I've tended to do all my life is I've tended to get myself into a place where I'm really comfortable. And then my grand plan is to make sure nothing changes and to rebel against any change. <laughs> and so I'm realizing that you're actually trying to help us to have a strategy for the changes that are going to happen because fighting against change, I'm guessing you would say probably isn't a good strategy at all. Um, we can go down that road if you want to, <laughs> but that having an actual strategy, because my, I haven't had a strategy. I've just, whenever things change, I become completely reactive and panic has been my, <laughs> my natural reaction rather than having an actual plan to execute. And so can you give, can you give an example from either your own life or somebody that you you've worked with? I, I don't care what the stage of life is, um, but what that looks like, like, I think I know what it looks like when I don't have a plan and I just react. I'm like, Oh no, this can't be happening right now. I'm not ready. You know, this is the end of the world this is the worst thing in the world. Um, and so it sounds like what you are teaching is something incredibly different, incredibly valuable. Um, so could you give us an example of what that looks like? Again, it could be in your own life or it could be in the life of somebody that you've worked with. Yeah, I, I'll do my own life. Um, I believe that your roles in life will change, but your purpose is eternal. And I, re I believe that the reason uh, we can react is because we put so much of our, our value and our self-worth into a role or a position or a title that we have. And when those times come to an end or change or are taken from us, we believe that our identity and everything that we felt comfortable controlling is gone. And so for me, um, I really battled with that in a move that we took from a town where I was very comfortable and very secure in my neighborhood, in the roles I was in. Um, I felt important, I felt valuable. And when we came to our new town, um, that was all gone. And I remember walking down the halls and not knowing anyone and not being known. Where before I was used to knowing everyone and being known there. And so I really had to grasp with um, that I'm still valuable and the role and the purpose that I had in those roles in that other town, I could bring to this town. It took about three years to really get comfortable with that. And I struggled immensely with my identity, with my value. I didn't feel like I fit in. I wanted to move back to my hometown. Um, and that was in 2002. So I'm still here, 2020. Um, and looking back, you know, all of that is a, so part of the message that God wants me to share was my own struggle with my value really being caught up in the role that I had. And when those roles left, really trying to understand that I still had 
the same purpose and that I would be using it elsewhere. You know, this just feels so relevant for what's happening in the world right now where they're like so much is up in the air and for many people their roles are being changed rapidly um and and they may or may not have any choice in the matter which can make it you know if you if if i'll just speak for myself i don't want to say anybody else but if i don't have a plan to execute then i'm just going to fall back on being a control freak and trying to hold on and grasp whatever i can and uh, try to um, either cling or keep going back, keep going back. Right. You know, that's interesting that you said you wanted to move back. You wanted to move back to where you had been, where you felt like you're, you know, you were comfortable in your role. And yet um, God is constantly calling us to move forward. So um, I know that, you know, on, as you describe your podcast, you say through interviews with inspirational guests, we'll discover ways to help you unlock the purpose God's placed in you, develop a game plan for your life's calling, embrace the intentional masterpiece you're created to be. So tell me, tell us a little bit about your inspirational guests, not so much who they are, because we can figure that we can find that out with a little bit of research, but what have you enjoyed most about the interviews you've done? And what have you found surprising in the interviews that you've done? Well, it's like, I'm still new, so I'm still working on it. Um, the, I want to bring on people that also, you know, that represent the brand, represent the promise, and can bring a new light to that same um, purpose of, you know, understanding a purpose. Um, but I've been um, pleasantly surprised at how much just they've brought into my life mm -hmm. personally and the message that they share that i want to share with my listeners has actually just really fed me mm -hmm. and helped me and i've also found surprising how um these people who i once thought were you know oh man they even never talked to me they'll talk to me and they're so nice and mm -hmm. so just normal just every day and um that they actually tell me you know, wow, I love your message. That was a real blessing. And so it's, it's been fun and it's been rewarding and it's nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> all of those all mixed up in one. Well, um, it is a wonderful new role for you that seems very consistent with many of the things you've done before, even if you wouldn't have necessarily thought 30 years ahead, I'm going to be a podcaster. <laughs> it just seems like a really natural, a natural fit, a great illustration. Um, so I want to talk about these three things that you are aiming to do um, that you've, you've put into words so beautifully here. What do you mean when you say unlock the purpose God's placed in you? Like that resonates with me, but um, I'm, what, what does that look like? The metaphor that comes to my mind that actually got me starting to speak to have people other than my youth group <laughs> um, is the story of Sleeping Beauty. Mm. And she was gifted with many gifts. But of course, before she could get her last gift, she was cursed with death. Mm -hmm. The gift that was then given from the third fairy mm -hmm. was that the death would be asleep. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when she was using her talents, if you watch the movie, it was the birds were singing and everyone was happy and she was using all the talents that she was given, but then she fell into a deep sleep. Mm -hmm. And while she slept, the entire kingdom stopped. Hmm. And it was only through an intimate interaction with a prince hmm. that she was awakened. And I hear so many people in my experience and working with youth say, I need to find myself. I need to find my purpose. And in Ephesians 2.10, which you'll see right behind me in that, in that canvas, mm -hmm. tells us you're a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And if anyone is a creative, and I think everyone is in their own way, when you go to create something, you already have an idea, you already know the purpose for it, and you know how you're gonna use it and how it's gonna benefit either you or the person you're gifting it to. There is no masterpiece or any kind of creation that is made and put on a shelf and left to find itself. <laughs> and so um, 
kind of like the story of Sleeping Beauty. Mm. As you compare yourself to others, as you think you need to go out and find yourself, mm. all the gifts that God gave you, all the ways that he needs you to impact your kingdom and those around you is asleep. Hmm. It's locked up inside because you're not using what God gave you. You're trying to use what he gave others. Hmm. And so unlocking the purpose, um, I'm hoping when my podcast blogs and ministry that I can provide keys and tools to help you understand that like Ephesians 2 10, that you're a masterpiece that God created with a plan long ago before mm. you even tried to find your purpose. It was there. Hmm. 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 I love it. Now um, the second thing you say here is develop a game plan for your life's calling. And it was, uh, it was kind of funny because you and I worked together a bit on trying to figure out the title, the, the name, the title for this podcast. And you had some great ideas that I love dearly, but other people had already used them. And um, as you were, and this happens so much in the brainstorming process, you know, it's supposed to be short, but because you want to be precise, you keep adding words and it gets longer and longer and longer. So tell your listeners just a little bit about what that process ended up being like and how, how you landed where you did process was miserable. <laughs> um, as you know, as my coach, um, I just kept playing with words, playing with words, trying to figure out, um, you know, a spiritual game plan in my mind at the time, what, and was, and continues to be a, a youth program that I do at our school and church. And, and, and I actually had a new school this year, try it out. I never really put it in the same lane as the women's ministry that I do with unlocking your purpose. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, I kept looking at all the different ways people do purpose. That's a, that's a common topic. A lot of people mm -hmm. talk about your purpose and um, I would look up all the titles and look up other things. I'm like, well, what makes mine unique? What makes mine unique? And as you know, as my coach, I sent you several ideas, one or two, <laughs> <laughs> And you would, and you knowing me and that I actually need to figure it out myself would say, great, but I'm not feeling it. Are you mm -hmm. sure that's what you want to say? And then of course I'd be like, oh, <laughs> and finally you said, okay, Sherry, can I, can I give you just, can I ask you one question? What are mm -hmm. you known for? If I were to come to your community and ask people what does Sherry Fletcher do? They're going to say she comes up with a spiritual game plan. And the only way that um, you can fully grasp your purpose is, ex is coming up with a game plan on how things are going to happen if your roles go away, how mm -hmm. things are going to happen if this situation comes up. Doesn't mean it'll always happen because there's plan A, plan B, plan mm -hmm. C. Um, but there's a Bible verse that is on a canvas in my um, hallway going out to the garage. So as my kids would go out the door to school, it says Isaiah 32, eight, and I would make my kids say it as we walked out the door, a noble man has a noble plan. So on noble deeds, he can stand mm. there's, and when it comes to your relevancy and your, um, identification and the purpose God has given you. Um, you have to have a plan to practice and have in place. Mm, mm, I love it. All right. And then the last thing you say here is, is embrace the intentional masterpiece you're created to be. And you, you described it so beautifully with the whole sleeping beauty metaphor. Why is it so important that even in the midst of, I'm just going to say chaos, cause that's how I'm feeling right now, but you know, it's so tempting right now for me to say, I'm just putting everything on hold and I'm just going to try to survive and make it through, you know, come back, check in with me in a year about purpose, Sherry Fletcher. <laughs> so what is the why purpose is of it? anything right now? Yeah. <laughs> but so, but why is it so important that at every single point in our journey, including, mm -hmm. if not, especially in the midst of uncertainty mm -hmm. that your listeners, that you, that I embrace the intentional masterpiece that God created us to be. Why is that so vital? Because right now we have to know that something in this world is intentional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we aren't just floating in this universe, seeing where it goes. And that everything God does is so intentional. And you know, you just look at 
mitochondria. <laughs> so intentional and with such a specific purpose. And right now when everything is so uncertain, um, just, being under, just being able to understand that you were intentionally created by an intentional God and that he didn't create you, like I said, and then just left you out here to mm -hmm. figure out why. And so it, it gives me comfort in my year mm -hmm. of 2020, as in any, and I hope with anyone's year, that things aren't as God planned. This earth is not as God planned, mm -hmm. but you were. Mm. Oh, that is such, whew. can you say that again? <laughs> I need to hear that again. <laughs> Well, we know that the, everything that happens on this earth is because this is where the enemy was sent. Mm -hmm. He is the prince of this earth. And so this earth is not, nothing that's going on in this earth is what God wanted for us. Mm -hmm. It was not intentional, but you were created intentional mm -hmm. and everything about you was intentionally thought of ahead of time. Mm, I love that. Whew. So let's wrap up with your hope for your listeners to your podcast and correct me if I don't have the name right, but it's your spiritual game yes. plan, right? Yes. Wonderful. So what is your hope for listeners of your spiritual game plan? I hope that through listening to this podcast that you can fully grasp exactly who God made you to be. And it, there's days when you won't understand it and there's days when it won't seem like it's there. But if you intentionally look for the little things mm -hmm. that God shows you, that he sees you, and that you can also be that to someone else, um, even if it's just opening a door and smiling at someone, that that made their day and realizing that's all, that was enough. That's all you had to do. I think so many people... Um, think that when they find their purpose, the Red Sea is going to divide and, you know, it's just going to be this magical moment and then everything will work out in place. And that is not what God wants. He says what you do for the least of these. And so understanding, I hope that this podcast, I hope that this ministry, I hope that these words help you understand that God is so intentional. God loves you. You already have a purpose. You don't need to find yourself. This is a place where you fit in. This is a place that you can come and get spiritually fed and then go out and execute your own spiritual game plan. Mm. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Sherry. Thank you for, for talking with me today, for all you've invested in me, even though you didn't know it over 30 years ago. <laughs> Where crazy. this would be I know crazy god how is, god does uh does god. plan all these things in advance whether or not we know it <laughs> god is amazing so yeah. thank you so much for um all you've done to get me to where i'm at today ah my privilege do you have a strategy for when things change i like how sherry gregory mentioned that without one we tend to react and that having a plan can actually help lessen the panic. Thank you for listening today. It is my hope and my prayer that through this podcast, you can understand that you are just who God planned you to be. For so many years, I tried to accomplish the plans I saw others carrying out. And it was not until I began to practice the gifts that God gave me that I've been able to see and experience that plan. I would love for you to take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, give it a rating, and leave a review. And if this message blessed you, please share it with a friend. I want to thank my friend and my coach, Sherry Gregory, for helping me out with this podcast today. Sherry's an excellent coach for those like me who have believed they are speakers, but not necessarily writers. So if you're looking for an experienced coach for any level, occupation, or occasion, you can connect with Sherry with the links that are provided in the show notes. I hope you can join us for episode 106. I'm going to be talking with Barb Roos as she shares her own personal story of what it means to surrender. We will be discussing how our perception of how things should go actually get in the way of trusting God's plan. We will be discussing two of the six surrendered principles that Barb discusses in her book, Surrendered, 
Letting Go and Living Like Jesus. This is a study of Jesus in the wilderness, and I know I can relate to so many things that she discusses. I hope that you will plan to join us and also share this with a friend. If you've missed the previous episodes, please go back. I know that the guests on there will bring as much inspiration and hope to you as they did to me. Again, thanks for taking your time to listen to Your Spiritual Game Plan.